let's start with the positives good morning or afternoon or evening or middle of the night there you go we're into serious learning straight away the biggest punchline of this whole course is establishing what benefits games might have compared with conventional educational methods. And the answer is right here before us. We're online. A game version that can be delivered online has a huge advantage. It doesn't matter where you are or when you listen. This version is available 24-7. You can download, skip parts, rewind. So a game version doesn't have to be better or even as good as a conventional lecture to have some value to the learner. From a teacher perspective, this may be even more important. A multimedia game version might take a bit longer and may lack some of the pizzazz and interactivity of a live performance, but once it's online, it can run forever. Clearly, this will be more useful in adult professional development like this open learning course you're doing than in primary school. But I don't use these cheesy visuals and avatars just to be cute or to appeal to young kids. No. They serve a very practical purpose. Avatars are much easier than a live lecture. I don't need big real estate for my lecture room or green screen. I don't need lighting. My sound equipment can be a podcast mic or even a dictaphone. The computer does the hard work, not I. I can create these whenever I have some spare time. For all you know, I could be ironing a shirt while talking to a podcast mic or lying by the pool as could you, listening to it. So this method of delivery has benefits to the learner and the presenter. So in a mere couple of minutes, we already have a major punchline of this course, that games have logistical advantages. Games have a lot of advantages over traditional educational methods. While imagination, such as reading a book, can take us to different places and times, a game allows us to interact once we get there. Competition and challenge can give us the incentives to do the drills that are essential to many types of learning. Computers can accurately keep track of reaction times and do the complex scheduling necessary for personalized learning. Research shows that game versions of learning tasks can approximate traditional teaching methods. But hey, traditional methods cost money. Even if you can find someone willing to dress up, go out and give you a live lecture for free, someone has to pay for the venue, electricity, admin and the advertising to get you to the course. On the web we can do a lot of this for free. So no significant difference is actually a lot of difference. If you learn almost as much but at a fraction of the time and cost, my math says that's a bargain. Okay, so a couple of minutes in and we've already got the main punch lines. Now let's gamify something. Normally, I'd introduce myself, as you, quite reasonably, might want to know my qualifications and experience to offer this course. Here is a game version instead. If you put this jigsaw together, it might tell you a lot about me. You could try putting the jigsaw together with software or just print it out on a piece of paper. But either way, isn't it a bit irritating that I haven't given you a straight answer? I've answered your question with a question. Normally, a course starts with you, understandably, wanting to know who's offering this course. But I turned around and handed you a jigsaw puzzle. I would find this irritating. So the third big punchline we're already learning is empathy. It's something that Microsoft learned from Ralston Purina Company, who make dog food. Their chefs are forced to eat their creations before inflicting it on dogs. Microsoft programmers were ordered to use their own software in their day job. I'm doing the same with you. If you find it irritating that I still haven't given you a straight answer about myself, but instead I'm playing games with you, we're eating our own dog food. So the third big punchline is putting ourselves in the other's shoes. We shouldn't inflict game versions on others if we ourselves find games irritating. Okay, here is where old-fashioned text wins out over a game. In one sentence, I can tell you that I did my master's degree on game applications in neurological rehabilitation, went on to academia where I did some of the first digital and online delivery of distance education in Australia, became a government research and policy officer in education, and, based on all this, in my own time, developed a multimedia network on the web. What more do you need to know?
Why bother making simple facts like that into a game? The same goes for the course outline. Why fool around with a game? Here it is. Oops, there I go again, giving you a blasted game instead of a simple answer. Here's the course outline. Part 1. We have definitions. What is a game version? Next, you've already seen gamification examples embedded in this course. The lack of research support means strategic use, benefit to cost ratio instead of benefit. I show you a simple way to gamify any task. We learn the distinguishing features that make a game. To get engagement, we level the playing field. You're familiar with dice and cards. The web takes the learner on a hero's journey. We tease out the active ingredients in games and multimedia. We tailor custom games to the audience. Practical implementation means custom games, quick, cheap, simple, effective. And last, we'll review our game examples and plan follow-up to the course. It didn't take me long to write this text. Text is hard to beat. But even text doesn't answer everything. Plenty of text has been written trying to define what is a game. So for homework, think about that question. What is a game? Think of words that are similar to game like toy, play, contest, sport, etc. And what was it about them that appealed to you? Then for your PD points, answer the simple question. What were the three punchlines of the course that we covered in this introduction?